Two of the most common mesh modeling tools in any package is of course the extrude and inset tools. In Blender, these are both quite easy to use. The extrude tool is available either from a hotkey or from the toolbar here via the extrude region and extrude individual. And I'll go over both of these in just a moment. But first, let's just make a very basic selection while in face select mode to take a look. So I'm just gonna select this top face and let's then hit extrude region and you'll see it has extruded the current selection along the normal, so it allows us to then just move it up and down automatically. And then as soon as I want to position it wherever I want, I can just left click and we're good to go. Now, a couple things to note. First of all, if I undo that and then extrude again, if I decide that I don't wanna do that extrusion and I now just right click, one thing to note is that this has not actually canceled the complete extrusion. The reason being is that extrude is actually a macro in Blender where it's actually doing two things. First, it's extruding and then it's activating transform along the normal. So when I cancel that extrusion by either right clicking or pressing escape, I'm actually only canceling the latter of the macro, which is the transform along the normal. Now, this is both a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it's nice because you wanna leave it right there and then manipulate it further after the fact, but other times you just want to remove it entirely. So just be aware that if that is the case, just be sure that you undo twice in order to remove any interior or zero um, area faces you may have created. But so that's the extrude region tool. Extrude individual is quite similar, where if we say select these two faces, if we were to choose extrude region, you'll notice that it extrudes both of those faces joined together, just as we might expect. However, if I press extrude individual, it will actually extrude each one of these faces as a separate extrusion and allow me to transform each of them along their normals. So this can be very handy. You'll also notice, as with most tools in Blender, that when I perform it, I then immediately have some options in here in the operator panel that allows me to adjust further things. So I can adjust the actual offset any way that I wish. I can enable mirror editing in the case that I'm working on, on a symmetrical mesh. I can enable uh, proportional editing, the proportional editing fall off, and etc. So most of the time you're not going to be working with this, but it is available if you wish. You can also access this panel by pressing F6 anytime over the viewport and it will show the settings for your last used function. So that's the extrude tool. Quite simple, allows you to extrude quite quickly, but this is just so far using the toolbar. Most fundamental tools in Blender, such as the extrude tool, are also available via shortcuts. And you can see that over the extrude region, the shortcut is E. So if I select this face and extrude again, I can just quickly extrude this just by pressing E, moving, confirming as many times as I want quite quickly. You can also find that the extrude region shortcut key is not actually listed, but if you press Alt E, you actually get a menu to then choose region, which is the default, or extrude individual faces, so that then you can extrude you know, a more complex selection such as the one that we did down here. One other way that you can also extrude is if you make a selection and you control left click, you can then just extrude along that path quite easily and quickly. So another method to quickly extrude uh, your current selection. So let's now look at the inset tool. The inset tool is fairly similar. If we just say select this section here, I'll just select all the vertices, and I now hit Control F, this will bring up my faces menu. And the faces menu is also available via the vertex and edge menus, and it's available by pressing Control F for faces, Control V for vertices, or Control E for edges. You can also find each one of these right here under the mesh menu. So faces, edges, and normals, or faces, edges, and vertices. So in this case, I wanna press Control F, and I can then find inset faces is available right here, or it's also available via the hotkey of I. So let's just left click here, and you'll notice that I can now have move my mouse in and out, and allows me to adjust the inset. As soon as I do this, however, you'll also notice that there's also some settings down here in the bottom of the viewport that allow us to adjust the behavior of this. For one, you can see that the confirm is either enter or left click, cancel is escape or right click. There's the current thickness setting. So you'll see that as I adjust the thickness, that changes. The depth setting, which allows me to actually 
So let's just say I want to scroll this in, but then I want to also offset the depth a little. I can then hold down control temporarily and it will allow me to adjust the depth any way that I want. As soon as I release control, it will go back to the actual inset. Or I can also press O and it will adjust to create an offset. Now, when I do an offset, you know, the depth may kind of make it a little interesting. But if you can't get your depth back to zero, that's okay because you can simply just left click and confirm and then you can adjust anything you want from the operator panel here. So I could go ahead and set the depth back to zero. I could say set the thickness to an even one. And maybe I want to instead, I want to offset it relative to the current selection or I want the offset to be even. So here you can see that these edges obviously are exactly parallel to their adjacent edges or there's not even, and I can choose a boundary selection or not. And in this case, you won't see this, but I'll demo this in just a moment. And then we also have the ability to toggle the outset on or off and whether I want to select the outer or the inner. So this is just handy as a selection method. So that's all fine and dandy, but now let's take a look, undo that actually. And let's now remove say these faces. So if I select these faces and hit X, you'll notice that I have a few more options than I did when in object mode, because I now have the ability to delete vertices, edges, faces, only edges and faces, only faces, dissolve, edge collapse, or edge loop. These are fairly self-explanatory, but in this case, if I just say select faces, it's only going to remove those faces, and this way these vertices around the edge have been left intact. And this is what the inset tool means when it refers to boundaries. So if I select, I'll just go into face mode for this by hitting control tab and choosing face. If, so let's just select this face right here and then use I for the inset. So we'll hit I to bring up our inset. And right now it's say, remembered the last settings that I used. So right now it's set to an offset. Well, I don't really wanna do an offset. So I'm gonna press O to go back to my inset. And now I can go ahead and just set this in any way that I want. And right now it's acting exactly like we would expect it to. But if I left click now and disable the boundary option, you'll notice it's removed this face here and is now no longer taking that boundary into account for the actual inset. So this allows you to get good clean insets, you know, around the center point of a model or anything like that. So that is the inset and extrude tools in Blender.